Hey, good morning. Welcome uh, on replay. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to wait for some people to sign on live. I want to do a quick uh, inspirational devotion for you to inspire you to walk in boldness today and confidence. No matter what your situation is, um, we serve an unlimited God. And that's what I want to focus on on the message or the devotion this morning. And it's good to see some people signing on. Good morning. Please let me know where you're watching from. And if you're going along in the Word of God with me in the Bible, which is a good idea, because in today's times, there's no telling what you'll hear or where you'll hear, hear it read from. So I'm going to be reading out of John, the 11th chapter, really only one verse, but it's just something that was the Lord has put on my heart to help you and help me this morning. I hope it blesses you. We serve an unlimited God. We serve a God that is without limitation. But I thank God, as, as a devotion I was reading this morning, and actually what inspired me to think on this, is he sets limitations on our situations. He's unlimited, which is amazing, because no matter what our situation is, sometimes we get to a place where we feel like we, it's just, we just don't have enough left. We don't, we don't have anything left. But see, God's not limited by what we think. He's not limited by our resources. God has all resources, and what we don't know, he has. He has everything, and it's just a wonderful feeling. I don't know what's going on in your life today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm going through some trials, and I'm thinking I don't have a lot left in some situations, and God has assured me in his word that he's unlimited, and when we try to put limits on God, it don't work. You can't limit him. And so even though by we fail and, and by our faith and we get weak and we say, God, I just don't think you're going to do it. I don't think it's going to happen. That's when God really does his best work in our lives because when we are weak, then he is strong. It's always been about his glory. I'm here today to glorify God. That's why I'm doing this video. I want to give God glory and praise, and I want to help you. I want to bless you today, and I'm going to bless you with the word, not anything I have, but what he's given us. One verse, John Chapter 11, very familiar passage about Lazarus. Lazarus, the one that had died and had been dead for four days, and Jesus raised him from the dead. And I want to read to you right here. Well, let me just read from verse 1 to verse 4. John chapter 11, verse 1 to verse 4. Please share this video, and please comment. Let me know where you're watching from. It does help. It inspires us to see the different places we reach, and it puts it in the news feed. And so we're picking up hundreds of new people. We're seeing new names, new faces getting a lot of messages, so thank God for that. Thank God for you sharing these videos. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister Martha. It was, that Mary, it was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother was Lazarus, who was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now, God loves you. Make no mistake about it. However, whatever's going on, whatever your situation, you're sick, you're financially in, strapped, you, you may be homeless, whatever the situation is, God loves you. Your circumstances does not change God's love. You cannot make God not love you. You can't do it. You can't be mean enough. You can't be bad enough. You can't be evil enough to make God not love you. You need to hear what I'm saying because our God doesn't love like man does. He doesn't pick and choose his favorites. The, the, the ground is even at the cross. There's no respecter of persons with him. For God so loved the world. This world's wicked. This world's fallen, but God loved the world. That whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He, God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means when we're doing our worst, he had done his best already for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. Somebody needs to say amen right there because God loves you. Somebody say that. God loves you. God loves you. God loves me. When Jesus heard, heard this, he said, this sickness, now here's, the, here's what I want you to get. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. This sickness is not unto death. Well, he died. He died. We know that Jesus said this sickness is not unto death. We know that he told his disciples, if you read on, hey, Lazarus sleepeth. They said, well, he, he, he does good if he sleeps. And, God, and the Lord said, no, he's dead. He died. And then when he got there in an the arid climate they're in, he'd been in a tomb for four days, so he, he was by that time stinking. 
And we know this is such a powerful message about salvation and how God raises you from the dead and uh, something sticking and separated from God and alive and new. But look, I want to talk to Christians this morning. I want to talk to you that are blood-bought child of God and you're suffering with sickness or, or, or you're suffering with, some, with uncertainties and anxiety. My God, the depression. I, I just, all this is on you. And, and it, it's called, there's so many things going on in your life you can't really focus on one and you just feel like you don't have enough. The deal is, this sickness is not unto death. God's not limited. He was never limited by Lazarus dying before he got there. He was never limited by Lazarus rotting in the grave for four days before he raised him. He wasn't limited by the doubts of the people that confronted Jesus when he came into the, the town and they said, couldn't you have saved this man's life? He's not limited by anything. But here, praise God, he puts limits on us. He puts limits on our suffering. He puts limits limits on our sickness. He puts limits on a lot of things in our lives that without him would just go on and on and on. Some people think it's a tragedy because somebody was really sick and they passed away. Why well, don't you know something? Sometimes God delivers them from that sickness by carrying them on to glory. See, there's no limitations uh, when it comes to God. He limits trials. He limits tribulations. He limits sufferings. As I was studying this, or, or God put this on my heart, I thought back to Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17, I think, or I think it's 17 or 16. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's in 1 Kings, I believe. And Elijah was had went to this, this widow woman's house where God was going to sustain him. God told him to go and stay with this widow woman. Where there was people looking for Elijah. They were, they were looking to, he, he had caused it not to rain for three and a half years, but a prophecy of God delivered a prophecy. So there was a great drought. And so he moved from one place to another. And when he got to this place, there was a widow woman there. The Bible says she had a barrel of meal, but a little bit of flour, just a little bit. And he asked her, he said, what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to make a cake for me and my son, and then we're going to die. She had decided right away, I, I don't have enough. We're done. I don't have enough to go any further. I've, I've took care of this child as long as I can. I've tried to survive this drought as long as I can. But God saw her long before the foundations of the world. Long before she was ever even thought of, God was thinking of her. God was thinking of you. She was on his mind. God, by his providence, knew and planned and designed for Elijah to be in that particular area and move to her place to sustain her. So we could read about it and we could preach about it, the goodness of God, the glory of God, the unlimited favor that God puts on us. Sometimes when we're in a situation and we say, I don't have enough, this is an awful place to be. My God, sometimes you're in their best place to be because you can glorify God. She had no idea when she had no meal in a barrel, but just enough for a cake that a, a prophet was going to come and say, look, you make me a cake first. Before you do anything else, make me a cake and the barrel of meal will not spoil. You do it for me. You do it for God. So she did that. And we know the story. The, 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 the cakes just kept coming. She just kept making the biscuits, as we say in South Carolina. Somebody say making the biscuits. She just kept making the biscuits. Why? Because God is unlimited. He's not limited by a barrel. He's not limited by a handful of meal. He's not limited by what people say about you, what people think. He's not limited by what you're looking at and all the resources that you may or may not have. God is God all by himself. And she was put in that position to receive the blessings of God. And for all eternity, written in his word because of what? Her suffering, her tribulation. We don't talk a lot about her. We talk about Elijah. We talk about how he caught fire down from heaven and the power of God consumed the burnt offerings. My Lord, if we've ever needed an Elijah to stand up today or Elijah's and call fire down from heaven, we need it today. But this widow woman was put there for a reason. And she's recorded in the word of God right there with Elijah. What a powerful thing. What a powerful place you are today. You who are suffering and going through tribulations. Maybe, maybe you're looking at a, situation called death that we flee from that we don't like to talk about. maybe you're looking at something terminal listen it's not popular we don't like to think about it but the bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment do you know there's a particular day and time hour minute and second that i'm going to leave here and you are too that's one that's one schedule that's one appointment we won't miss and when you wrap your mind around it and realize that Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Don't love your life unto death. Trust me. 
it's a powerful place to be, but we don't want to be there because we want to be in control. We want to control our situations. We want to, we want to believe that we have enough to get through this. Sometimes God takes us to a place where we don't have enough by man's standards. And we say, I'm, I'm limited. But that's when God says, no, you're not limited because I'm not limited. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. You have the power of the most high God in you. Don't you doubt his love for you. Don't you doubt for one second what God has for you. He has great plans for you. He's got a lot of good things for you. It may not be what we think. It may not be what man would consider good, but make no mistake about it. The day you step into heaven, my brother and sister, oh my Lord, all this place here will fade away. And you'll realize, you'll realize if I'd have just had this vision of heaven and what it was like, I'd been like Brother Paul. Paul saw, he went, he saw, he knew what heaven was like. And Paul ran to the chopping block. He wanted to be there with God. I pray to help somebody today. Father in heaven, I pray that someone today is blessed. I pray that somebody, there's a Lazarus that's sick. There's one that's dying. There's one that may be dead in his sins and trespasses. Or there one may be, whatever the situation is, I pray, Lord, that you raise them up mightily. Lord, deliver them. Use them, and Lord, for your glory. I pray for that widow woman. Lord, I pray for that one that's out there that don't have enough to sustain. God, we know you're unlimited. I pray for your holy favor upon her. Let her see you and not her problem. Let her see what you're doing and not what people are saying. I give you the praise and the glory for that. And God, I pray for the Elijahs. Oh, Lord, raise me. Let us all be Elijahs. Lord, we want to we want to call fire down from heaven. We want the Holy Ghost fire to fall on this country of ours, Lord, and just burn through America, Lord, and setting people on fire for you and, and people being born again and people that are, are, are hopeless and don't, don't have any, any direction in life, Lord, to understand that their life has meaning and has purpose and it's always been about you to serve you. We'll give you the praise and the glory for it. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today and walk in the favor of God.